Okay, we're good to go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, thank you. Well, the beginning of my presentation was actually a little bit of what we talked about at the beginning, introducing myself, but I'll, I'll do it again for the for the video. My name is Caleb Pisha the Rock, and I am from Sudbury, Ontario, and I'm going to talk today about the my different projects I've got going on in the different councils and how I stay motivated uh, to bring all these projects to fruition. I feel, personally, I feel like I'm a very busy person and the tactics I talk, I will talk about, oh my goodness, share it, my screen is not changing. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a Zoom session without some technical issues, would it? <laughs> we, we can crop this out, so don't uh, definitely, Okay. Uh, if you'd like to go a cappella, that's also an option, but feel free to troubleshoot for a sec. Um, I'll try just sharing it again and we'll see if that fixes the issue. Sure. All right, there you go, now we're good. Yeah, let me, let me try that again, sorry. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Caleb Pisha the Rock, and today I'm gonna to be presenting the different projects and the different councils I've got going on in my life and how I stay motivated to fulfill uh, the different responsibilities and bring all these projects to fruition. Just a little bit about, about myself before, before we get started. I'm actually from Sudbury, Ontario, so I'm not from Toronto, I'm a Northern guy. And I, sp I spend a lot of time outside. I, I have a cottage a few hours, actually an hour and a half around away from Sudbury, where I, I was born and raised there. I spend a lot of time tubing, water skiing, um, biking in the summer quite a bit. I go to Laurentian University. I am a fourth year student, beginning my fourth year in, in this fall. And I'm doing a double major in uh, business and economics. I started working in public policies last year in August. Uh, in July, sorry, for a lobbying firm up in Ottawa. I lived in Ottawa last summer for this job, uh, Compass Rose Group. And I really, this, I just wanted to dip my toes in a little bit and see how, how, how the world works. And it's a little bit of a different world than the business world I'm kind of used to. And I really decided to jump in head first when I applied and was appointed to the Premier's Council for Equality of Opportunity, which is my biggest project and my biggest accomplishment, I would say that I'm gonna talk about in just a second. Some other projects I've got going on. Um, I actually recently started my own small business and I'm also a National Youth Council member at the CNIB, the, Cal the Canadian National Institute of the Blind. I'm gonna to touch quickly on, on those two as well. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna talk about the PCEO. That's the Premier's Council on Equality of Opportunity. This council's mandate is, we, we would work directly under uh, the ministries of uh, the, um, Doug Ford's office, sorry. <laughs> and we, our, our mandate is to eliminate barriers and increase opportunities for marginalized groups across Ontario. As I mentioned earlier, I was, I was appointed in August of 2020, that would be. And my first big project I started working on was the BYAP, the Black Youth Action Plan. This project was under the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. And we were really able to reach out to the community. As a member, my main job is to real, is to relate the values and the, um, the the values that the community uh, wants and the important uh, issues that our, my community suffers. So, for example, I'm from Sudbury, Ontario, but I'm also francophone. So, French language is a, is a is, I've been born and raised in French, so it's very uh, it's important to me. For the Black Youth Action Plan, I was actually able to bring those values to the ministry and help support everybody and anyone in Ontario that also supports those values. We connected the community and saw which funding worked, which where we needed more funding, and we we're actually able to advocate for increased funding for the whole project as a whole. The government, a few months after our engagement section, actually uh, doubled the funding for this program. A few months later, uh, we met with other ministries, such as the Ministry of Employment and Skills Training, uh, the Ministry of Health, and our most recent 
engagement sessions with the community was actually with the, you know, uh, the Ministry of Colleges and Universities. And obviously as a student, I apologize for that. And obviously as a student, this is, um, this hits right at home. Laurentian University, as many of you might've heard, is going through some financial trouble right now. And this is where uh, I went. So it was really important to get their opinion and get uh, their side of things to bring to the government and tell them here, this is what's happening. We need to do something about this. This is still an ongoing issue that, I, that I'm fighting for, but I think it, it just really puts in perspective the effect that um, this council can have on, on the ministry and on the, our communities as a whole. Moving on to Green Tea, which is my personal small business. I started this company a few months ago. It, was, it started off as a class project in my venture initiation course. And myself and a few other students actually ended up winning the pitch competition that came with the course. And the judges were so impressed, they told us we should just take it to market, which is exactly what we did. The green, green tea is not what you expect it to be. It's not actually green tea, but it, it, it is one of the ingredients and it's a compostable air freshener for your compost bin. So you just hang it on the side and it absorbs all of the bad smells and repels pests. We were trying to solve an issue that would help and that would help and uh, incentivize sustainable behavior in our city, in Sudbury and across Ontario. There is a lot, we did some market research and it was about 30% of people who did not compost in Ontario. And the main reason for that was due to bad smells. So this solves the issue. Next on uh, my, my next project is the CNIB, is with the CNIB, it's the National Youth Council. And my, my position there is really to bring a youth lens to the different programs that uh, the association brings, the, the institute brings to youth with disabilities, youth and adults. I was actually, I, I was lucky enough to uh, have the support of the team to create my own program uh, this past year. It started in February, it was, it was called Let's Talk Money. And it's a financial literacy program for youth with disabilities. We talked from anything from ODSP, Ontario Disability Support Plan, to ADP, Assistive Devices Program, and all the way to Investment 101 to first-time home buyers. If, being in business, I kind of I understand that I was able to see the importance of financial literacy at a young age, how investing now gives you XXX amount of money in the future. And I was really astonished to see how many youth with disability had no idea that programs like Ontario Disability Support Plan or the federal program, the Registered Disability Support Plan, were, were not being utilized. And these, this is the difference of a few hundred thousand dollars in the long run. Myself and another member, Danny Kofrapi, were able to bring this program and present it to youth with any disability. The CNIB did not limit it to uh, people with visual disabilities, which was really nice as well. Now, the, knowing all those, those three big programs of projects I've got going on as well as school, and obviously I, I work, I'm still working for Compass Rose. How do I stay happy with COVID, <laughs> with COVID being a big factor and how do I stay motivated? I, I just wanted to share these two little tips and tricks that I have learned and that I started using. First, I call it hunting for wins. Uh, we, everybody has those days, everyone can relate to this, where you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. And as the day goes on, you just feel like the world is against you and you just, everything piles up. And by the end of the day, you're just in a really, really bad mood. Well, that same concept can be applied and utilized in the other sense. If you wake up and you wake up in a good mood, your day can keep going better and better and better, which this is what I call, uh, this is the effect I call hunting for wins. I'll give an example with the Tesla I have here on the screen. Maybe Tesla is not the best car I should pick for this because it's a very popular car. People, it's easy to spot, but let's say you buy yourself a Tesla. You will, you are more likely to notice other Teslas driving around. Same thing with a yellow car. If you buy yourself a yellow car, you're going to be driving around. You're going to notice, oh my God, there's so many yellow cars around. I never noticed. You're, there's not actually more yellow cars. Your brain is just trained to notice those yellow cars now. I'll apply this to, I'll explain how I, how I hunt for wins. When I wake up in the morning, I make myself a cup of coffee, put a little bit of cream in it, and then I taste it. It's a good coffee. That's my first win. I keep going on with my day. I walk outside to go to work. It's a beautiful day. That's win number two. 
When I get to work, my friend Jacob waves at me, win number three. Have a good lunch, win number four. And the wins just keep piling on as the day goes on because you are looking for them. You are, after doing this, um, after hunting for wins, you start, your brain starts looking for those wins instead of looking for those losses, like in the first example I gave. So by the end of the day, you are just in a really great mood. And I've been doing this for the, I've been trying to <laughs> train myself to do this. And I can only say I've seen a difference in my, in my personality. I feel a lot more, a lot happier uh, with my everyday life, especially during COVID mental health is extremely important. Now this actually, I just started doing not long ago. I, I, my new year's resolution this year was actually to read more books and I'm up to book 12, I believe so far this year. And this was in my latest book that I read. If you guys have any book suggestions, I can, I can give you a bunch after this, but this is the, the latest book I've read. And it talks about a study that was conducted by John Barge. It's called the Florida effect. So I'll explain the study, then I'll say how I use it and how I apply it in my day-to-day -day life. The researcher, John Barge, had two different groups. The first group, we'll call it group A. Group A had to fill in the blanks. They were in a room. They had to fill in the blanks on a page, but the words they could see on the page were words relating to elderly people. So Florida was one of them, which is why the, the study is called the Florida effect. So Florida, forgetful, slow, for example. In the other room, there was three other uh, there was not three other participants, or there was other participants, and they had the same type of page, but the words they could see on the page that weren't blanked out were a little bit younger, more energetic, like fast and powerful, for example. After the two part, the two groups filled in the page, they were instructed to walk back down to the lobby. After they got down to the lobby, the researchers tracked how long it took them to walk to the lobby, and that's where this that's where the study was interesting. The people who, who had the younger words actually walked faster and more energetically to the lobby compared to the people that had words like Florida, um, old and forgetful. Unconsciously, and the participants were asked this after the study, did you notice those words were relating to older people, to, to the older generation compared to the newer generation? And not a single participant consciously noticed that difference, but unconsciously, it, it affected their behavior. So this is how I apply this in my day-to-day -day life. If, for example, if I'm in a room where there, there's not much light, it's, it's dark and there's no bright colors, you're more likely to be in a, in a bad mood or not motivated. What I started doing, and I started adding colors, making their rooms a little brighter, adding some plants. I have a huge tree in my living room now. <laughs> um, and it helps you and puts you in a better mood and motivates you to, to be more energetic. Now this, this goes again with, um, this, still, this concept still applies with the people you surround yourself with. We've always, we've always, we have always heard this where you gotta surround yourself with good people, but this concept really, really proves that, uh, the importance of that. If you surround yourself with people that, are, uh, that watch Netflix all day, you're more likely to watch Netflix all day compared to if you surround yourself with people that are motivated, go for walks, go for hikes, like biking, obviously you're more likely to do all those activities. There's nothing wrong with either or, you just have to be able to define and decide which, uh, which way you wanna go. If you wanna convince yourself and motivate yourself to do more exercise, start surrounding yourself with those people. If you wanna, if you're comfortable where you are and you just wanna relax, then there's no, that's not a problem either. So those are the, the two, big, uh, big tricks I've been using. And so far I, I can't, uh, I have no complaints. I know this was a little bit of a, a shorter presentation, but thank you very much. And if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks very much, Caleb. Uh, I, um, I think, uh, yeah, Brent is,